Welcome to Mustard Bikes. Today we've got Suzuki's all new GSX-R1000 for 2017 on the bench and we're going to run you through fitting one of our fender eliminators from start to finish. To complete the job you'll need a number of tools. You'll need a 4mm and a 5mm Allen key, a 10mm spanner and if you have it a 10mm of socket or ratchet is going to be very handy. You'll also need a Phillips head stub nose screwdriver. In the box, you will have received your fender eliminator, along with two mounting brackets, and a bag of bolts. In the bag, there should be two bolts, two nuts, three cable ties, as well as a stick-on rubber patch and a rubber grommet. Lastly, you'll also need your key. The first process is to remove this infill panel beneath the tank. You'll need your 4mm Allen key and start by removing this bolt. With the bolt removed, we can pull the panel away. There are two clips below these segments here and a tab up the top of the tank. Put your hand underneath and gently pull out the clips. When removing it, just be cautious that you don't catch this tab. With the panel removed, we have access to the bolt that holds on the rider's seat. Using your 5mm Allen key, remove the bolt. Repeat this process on the other side of the bike as well. With both sides removed, we can remove the rider's seat by lifting from the front and pulling forwards. Take the pillion seat cover off using the rider's key. The next process is to remove the four plastic clips on the underside of the tail. To remove them, pull the centre of the clip out and then pull the whole part out. Back on top of the bike, we have two more plastic clips we need to remove. Following those, we remove the two bolts up here using a 4mm Allen key. and then the two silver ones behind those with a five millimeter Allen key. Again with the four millimeter Allen key, remove the two bolts on either side at the front of the fairing. Once they've been removed, pull out the sides of the fairing and unclip them. Remove the black centrepiece by pulling it out from either side. And just lay it a bit further forwards. To pull the rear fairing off, we need to pull it backwards and upwards. And the whole part should come off. With the rear fairing removed, we can disconnect the three plugs going to the rear fender. Using a blunt object, push on the pin that holds the two sides of the plug together. There's a cable tie holding them to the frame. By lifting the small clip on the cable tie, you can loosen it. To remove the rear fender, we need a 10mm ratchet or spanner to remove the four bolts holding it on. There's still a screw inside holding the rear fender in place, so once the four bolts are removed, it won't come away just yet.
The last screw holding the rear fender on is located up underneath here. You'll need a snub-nosed Phillips head screwdriver to get it out. With the screw removed, we can remove the rear fender from the bike. Now that we've removed the rear fender, if you're fitting the stock indicators, we'll need to fit them to the fender eliminator. To disassemble the stock rear fender, we need to remove these five screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. This will allow the back panel to be pulled out. Using a 10mm spanner, we can now undo the standard indicators. Pull the entire indicator away from the rear fender. Once we've removed the standard indicator, we can fit it to the fender eliminator. Take the indicator and fit it to your Mustard Bikes fender eliminator. Make sure that you get the indicator on the same side as it was on the bike. Feed the wire through the larger hole and fit the whole part up. Then use the original nut and screw that back in place to hold it on. Make sure it's done up nice and snug. We then repeat the same process for the other indicator. With both indicators fitted to the fender eliminator, it's now ready to fit to the bike. Before we fit the fender eliminator, we're gonna cover up some of these holes left by the original fender using the rubber lug and the stick-on patch that was supplied in your kit. Peel the backing off the stick-on patch and line it up over the square hole. Next we fit the brackets that are going to hold your fender eliminator. The one with the large hole in it goes to the right side of the bike. We use the original bolts to hold it in place. At this stage, we'll only go finger tight. Do the same for the left hand bracket. Place the fender eliminator up onto the brackets we've just installed and using the two countersunk bolts and M6 nuts supplied in the kit, bolt the assembly together. Using your Phillips head screwdriver and 10mm spanner, tighten the nuts and bolts until they're just snug. Before tightening the bolts, check from behind and make sure that the fender eliminator is aligned and straight with the rest of the bike. Once you're happy with its position, tighten all the bolts off. Tighten the four bolts holding the whole assembly to the bike.
with the whole assembly bolted to the bikes, feed the wires through the remaining hole into the back of the bike. To keep the wires neat and tidy, use some of the provided cable ties to tie the cables in place. Run the wires as per original and through the cable tie. Then plug the cables back in place. The red goes in the red, black in black and white and white. Before continuing, turn on your bike's ignition and check that both the indicators are working correctly and in the right direction and that the LED bolt is lighting up. With the fender eliminator installed, we need to refit the rear cowling. There are a number of tabs which need to be aligned before the rear cowling will seat properly. To start, place it on the bike in roughly the position it will need to be. Align the tabs at the rear first. With the tabs in place, the fairing will slide forward slightly. Refit the middle panel between the two fairing sides. The fairings are quite flexible, so don't be afraid to pull them aside to get it in place. Lastly, push the two lugs into their rubber grommets at the front of the fairing. With the fairing installed and properly aligned, we can bolt it back in place. The two silver bolts go at the back using a 5mm Allen key. Refit the two plastic plugs into here. To do that, pull the centre of the plug out, place it in the hole, and then push the centre of the plug in. Fit the remaining four bolts with the 4mm Allen key. Underneath the cowling, replace the four plastic clips removed earlier. Refit the rider's seat and bolt it in place using the 5mm Allen key in the original bolt. Next we reinstall the infill panel. There are two lugs here that go into the corresponding rubber grommets. Align them up and push them into place. Then make sure the front tab is underneath the tank and lastly give it a push in the middle of the panel as there's a velcro patch behind it that needs to engage. 
Lastly, we install the 4mm bolt. Repeat the process on the other side with the seat locking bolt and the infill panel. Once you've refitted your pillion seat cover, all that remains is to fit your number plate. We hope you found this video informative and helpful with your installation. If you haven't already purchased our product, or if you've run into any issues, you can contact us via our website at mustardbikes.com. We hope you enjoy your GSXR 1000 and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.